Scott Gilmore is a former Canadian diplomat who founded Building Markets, an organization whose aim it is to build markets, create jobs, and sustain peace in developing nations. But it was his recent article in Maclean's magazine that really caught our attention, and we knew we had to spread around some of that good news. Welcome, Scott. It's a pleasure to be here. Your article was crazy, entitled, This is Literally the Best Time to Be Alive. It's true. It, it, it is the best time, and I think one of the most satisfying things about having written that article is how people reacted to it. Because they reacted with a surprise. We were all under the impression that these are the dark, dark days. Times. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So did you get, were you get hostility? Did you get celebration with the article? Well, I, I, you know, when you, when you write in a, in a national news magazine like McLean's, almost everything you write will be, find somebody who's hostile to it. Um, in this case, yes, there was people that wrote to me and said, well, how dare you suggest these are good times when we're facing climate change, when we have the ongoing problems in Syria, it detracts from the, the struggle of our Aboriginal peoples. And while all of that is true, there are horrible, horrible things happening on the planet right now. In the, in the aggregate, it's never been a better time to be a human being, to be alive and to be doing things. Well, that's crazy. I want to unpack some of this because I don't think people are believing you right now. Right. So let's try to prove it. Let's start with wars. Is there really less war happening in the world? There is. It's, it's, it seems that there isn't because we're watching it every night on TV. And not only that, it's on our smartphones. It's in our Twitter feed. It's so easy to think that everything uh, that's happening around the world looks like what's, what's going on in the Ukraine right now or Syria. But in fact, fewer, not only are there fewer wars now than any time in history, they're less deadly. Fewer people are being killed in those wars. Hmm. And not only that, you said the number of civil wars has gone down, and uh, I think also warheads, right? There's less, less nuclear warheads in the world. Yeah, well, let's begin by saying there's still too many nuclear warheads, uh, but I believe they're about half of what they were at, at the height. Wow. Again, too many, but still, it's a much, much better time to be alive than it was, say, in the 70s and 80s when we think back at the good old days. That's crazy, because it does feel worse than the 70s. I, I wasn't as much of a news junkie at that age, though, <laughs> yeah, yeah. so maybe that's part of it. Okay, what about poverty? Because it seems like just we see on the news all the time people starving, hunger, bad water, mm -hmm. housing well, issues. You know, I, I started a charity, and I have to say the charitable industry is very, very guilty of creating what I call poverty porn. They're constantly putting on our TVs and in our magazines heartbreaking stories of people in desperate need so that they can raise as much money as possible. I understand why they do that, but it gives us the, the, um, the impression that poverty is, is worse and, and worse and worse, when in fact, there have never been fewer people in poverty right now measured by absolute or relative terms. Hmm. It's, it's, uh, and, and you see that very, very vividly when you're on the ground in places like Africa and Southeast Asia. Change is afoot. Yeah, you know, I, when I go out and speak, I often say that poverty's been cut in half in one generation. And I say, how many people have heard that stat? And no hands go up. Nobody's heard that. Well, where's the media in reporting some of these good things? Well, it's, there, you know, it's very easy to blame the media. I'm happy to do that. They clearly are uh, writing the more horrific stories and not the happy stories. But it's also because we're reading the horrific stories. You know, when you sit down in the morning with your morning paper and your cereal, you're much, much more likely to spend time reading about um, some poor family that's lost children in a house fire because that's really going to get you emotionally and you're going to pay attention to it and you're going to remember it. You're much, much less likely to read the story on the next page about the local school that just held a, a, a Christmas pageant. Mm -hmm. um, we're, we're not attracted to the mundane. We're, we're attracted to, to the grotesque and the horrific. And our brains are wired that way. This isn't uh, a, a necessarily some sort of sin. It's just the way the brain works. We are attracted to dangers because that's how we stay alive, knowing what's out there. That's crazy. Well, I think we have to change that. But let's keep going. Yeah. Um, so just to finish up, poverty, 78 million fewer child laborers in the world. Hunger has dropped globally by 40%. And even in Canada, the number of people living on low incomes has never been smaller, you say? That's amazing. I think people don't even know that. And then healthy societies. What about democracies? Right. So uh, more than half the people on the planet right now live in some form of a democratic society, which has never been the case in history. Um, we're seeing more and more stability, less and less authoritarianism. Again, that seems difficult to believe when you take a look at what we read about what's happening in, in, in Moscow, for example. Um, but in fact, uh, peace, for example, in Africa, last week um, we had elections in Nigeria. And that was the first time in Nigeria's history that they had a democratic transition from one elected leader to another. That's a country that's the, the largest uh, country in Europe, has a pop or in, in Africa, has a population the size of Germany and France and Canada combined, mm. and yet none of us pay any attention to it. 
Yeah, I did read about that actually, but I have an interest in Nigeria, especially Boko Haram, you know, in right. the north who's been slaughtering so many Christians and targeting them. So what happens in Nigeria is kind of close to my heart anyway, that's but right. I, I think you're right. Probably the average person was not out celebrating. But, but that's, that's a great point you raise about Boko Haram. When people think about Nigeria, they think about Boko Haram, a horrible organization which has done horrible things. They've killed about 10,000 people. Now, 10,000 people is less than the number of people that die in car accidents in Canada over the next two to three months. Hmm. And so you, you have to put these things in, into perspective. Yeah, I guess we accept, you know, that a car accident may happen. We hope not. But you don't accept that someone's going to chop off your head or gut your intestines or, you know what I mean, like burn you inside of a house. That's right. Which is, you know, and, and so this is, again, why the media covers it, why our politicians spend so much time, frankly, trying to scare us is that's a much more vivid idea that captures our attention. The fact that all of us are much, much more likely to die from the cream in our coffee than we are from, from uh, a terrorist attack is not paid attention to. Yeah, absolutely. And you make those points in a lot of your writing, and I so appreciate that. I think it's a fresh perspective. And, you know, sometimes we need to step back and look at the big picture and kind of get out of the things we get obsessed with, you know, or worried about, as you said. Um, for example, in Canada, crime rates the lowest they've been in 15 years. Yes. yes. And that's worldwide, too, yeah. as well. Crime's going down all over the world, which is, I don't even, I wouldn't even know how to explain that. And the number, this got me, because, you know, uh, we do some work in Haiti, and I was mm -hmm. there watching a thousand people graduate with literacy for the first time in their That's life horrible. and you know in the rural areas of Haiti illiteracy could be up to 90% I right. think it's really bad but but the stat worldwide is the number of people who has re who can read has climbed from 57% to 95% of the world That's right actually uh, that stat um, was was that was in the original article wasn't inaccurate Oh. Um, the 95% referred to a specific age category. Oh. Um, but the point is, is that it is dramatically increasing. Yes, and I thought 95% was high. So I, I, yeah, I was I, like, okay, if Scott Gilmore says it, in McLean's. I, well, <laughs> you, you can't trust anything that media says, and you particularly can't trust me. <laughs> uh, but that's absolutely, that, 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 that needs to be corrected. Um, you know, there's a dilemma here, though, when we talk about this, this good news story. And I, and I do feel that, that the public and, and your viewers and, and our politicians need to put things in context, need to recognize that the world is a great place and give thanks for that. But simultaneously, it does put into contrast the things that are going wrong. So, for example, mm -hmm. Canada, we've never been wealthier. We've never been so well educated. We've never had such low rates of infant mortality. And yet, if you go up to a Iqaluit in, in, in Nunavut, Mm -hmm. the, an Inuit child there is eight times more likely to die than a child in Mississauga. Yeah. And they're, they're dying at a rate that you would find in countries like Somalia. And so it, when you recognize how good things are for the vast majority of us, it forces you to pay a little bit more attention to those unfortunate few who really are suffering and hopefully motiva motivates us to do something about it. Well, you know, you said like we like the bad news stories. We like to look at that. So it is kind of surprising that we don't seem to look at that, that mm -hmm. it's kind of like the silent genocide that's going on in a sense, you know, where, you know, our First Nations communities are suffering so much. And I, I did an interview recently just about the high rate of suicide, especially in Nunavut, the highest in Canada. That's right. And, you know, where's the outcry? He, he yeah. said if you take the stats for young men and you apply it to Toronto, it would be like 78 people killing themselves a week or something, yes, you know, absolutely. like that. Yeah. And there'd be a huge outcry about yeah. it. And yeah. I think those are conversations we absolutely need to have is like, why do we not care? Why are we not doing something? And maybe yeah. I think sometimes you just don't know what to do. Yeah. You don't know why it's happening. It's far away. and You don't know how to fix yeah. it because throwing money at it is not doing anything. It's That's not right. the answer. That's right. Well, you know, this is I, I hope we're not confusing people by, by saying this, but, you know, it is the best of times. But simultaneously, there are horrible things going on. And um, the, it, it's too easy for us to get too frightened and, and, and to tune out when, in fact, we need to refocus and take a look at those places where it isn't going so well. And the First Nations community is, uh, is absolutely an example of that. I'm, I'm originally from Flim Flon, Manitoba, up in northern Manitoba there. And there are reserves up there that have conditions similar to places that I've seen in Africa and, and, and Haiti. And, you know, that's not acceptable. No, it shouldn't be. Absolutely. And I mean, that's why we do what we do. And I think the reason, one of the great reasons to talk about stats like this is to say that what we are doing is working. Because mm -hmm. I think the, the downside of all the negativity is that people feel like I can't make a difference. Right. I keep giving my money that's to these aid organizations point. and nothing ever changes and people yeah. are still starving and there's still water. But in actual fact, it's working. It actually is working. It is making a difference. Yeah. And, and you know from what you do and what I've seen, it can. I've seen whole communities change. People's lives change and every one of those people matters. Yeah. You know, that's why we do what we do. Everybody can make a difference. And, you know, they don't have to fly to Haiti 
to, to do it. In fact, they probably shouldn't fly to Haiti if they <laughs> genuinely want to make a difference. Yeah. Um, but you know, even here at home, by just paying attention to what our politicians are saying, to paying attention to what's being written in the newspapers and questioning it, you know, like the statistics in, in, in my article, and being informed when you go to the polls, being informed when you talk to your mayor, being informed when you write letters to your councilman, you can have an impact, and we are all already having something of an impact. We are making progress. The world is becoming a better place. Mm -hmm. And absolutely, and you know, I want to talk more about that in a further interview with you about just development and the way to be smart about how you invest your development dollars, you know, and we will talk about that, but not in this interview. I want to finish this because this is amazing. We are living longer. You said in the Middle Ages, very few people ever lived to middle age. The global average is 70 years. In North America, we're living to 80 years. That's right. Yeah. Child mortality has been cut in half. The number of malnourished children has dropped 25 percent. Are people yes. even taking this in at this point? Maternal mortality has been cut in half since 1990. Malaria is down. Teen pregnancy is down. Smoking is down. And I only wrote down some of the stats in your article. Like it's it's a little overwhelming. It is, and um, but it's it's wonderful news. And you, the there is a, an impression that we have maybe because we're living inside gated communities that whatever's out there is is dangerous and, and, and terrible. You know, what's out there is often beautiful and wonderful and, 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 and not only lovely, but even lovelier than it w we used to be in our fond memories from childhood. So the people should get out, they should look around. The world's not getting worse, it's getting better. Yeah, and we should be thankful too, like thankful people. Absolutely. I think that's one thing I take away from all of my work and all of my travels is that I need to be more thankful and more appreciative and more generous. Yes. You know, with what we have. Yeah. Well, gratitude gives us happiness, so that's the secret. Well, thank you so much for coming. When I read your article, I said, you know what? We need to get the story out here. People need to hear something encouraging and positive. And hopefully they didn't turn to some a car accident or something else on the That's news, right. but they took the time to sit and watch and listen. Good. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank